Hey, Arlo and Frank. Today I want to tell you about foot races that I've run over my life. See, I didn't look good at the starting line. Even though the song says everybody does. That's everybody that gets to the starting line. But there was a point in my time that there were no starting lines for me. In the 1980s, I worked at the 17th District as a police officer in Philadelphia. And I used to have this thing called Clarkie's Pig Roast. At the house in Stone Harbor every summer, the guys from the district, we would all chip in and buy a bunch of food. We'd get barbecue grills. I mean, we had one at the house, but we would also, other people would bring grills. They would bring all kinds of things to go in the water with and we would grill, have a great time all day, and then go out into the, into the water, because we lived two blocks from the ocean, just like I do now. And we would go out and everybody would go crazy. We'd have a good time. Well, one time, I was looking at this, there was a guy named Ronnie Hall. He had taken a bunch of pictures, and I was looking at his pictures of the, the pig roast, and there was a picture of somebody working the grill from behind. And he was fat and he had this giant bald spot back here. And I said, who is that? And Ron said, you're kidding, right? No, who is that? He said, that's you. I was horrified. Right around the same time, I 
stop somebody for a, a traffic violation. And now I had gotten transferred to the 92nd district at this point in time, but it was right after I got there. I was out on Kelly Drive and I stopped somebody. And as I was going back to my car, after I got the guy's information, he was sitting in there in his girlfriend's car, it turned out. He was driving. And as I was walking back to the car, he must have been looking at me out of the side view mirror. And I heard him say, that cop's waddling. I bet he's gonna waddle all the way to the Dunkin' Donuts. And I went, wow, this, this is horrible. Like, I'm a big fat guy. So I, one time I was going down to the shore, down to Stone Harbor, after my last shift, and I decided to stop and, and buy some running shoes. Now, I didn't know anything about running shoes. I didn't know any runners. So I just went to Wanamaker's and bought a pair of Bobo's. And I put them on that night and I ran a half a mile from 87th Street on the beach to 96th Street and then a half a mile back. And I survived that. So the next day I went out and I ran a little bit more than that. Well, the rest as they say is history. I, I started working out because it wasn't enough to just to to just run because that does not much for your upper body and i was a surfer and and actually the reason that i started running more than anything was that i still surfed in the summer and i was out of shape so i said well if, if i can run and get in shape to be a police officer and be a surfer, then I'll be okay. But so it, it, at one point in time, I bought some weights and things and I started working out on York Street in the house, up in my bedroom. I had this enormous bedroom. Arlo and Frank, your dad's, well, Arlo, your dad remembers it well, I'm sure. And, but they spent a lot of time with me up there I had a pool table, it was a really cool room, and then enough room for a weight set. So I started to do that. And <clears throat> I started to run in Philadelphia, run in the back streets. One time, I was in pretty good shape, and I went for my run in the evening in, in Stone Harbor. And I started running on the beach, and as I passed the pavilion at 88th Street, which is where I proposed to your grandmother where we got married and a lot of other things in the history of my life that happened on that pavilion. I saw these kids that were running up to me and then they ran behind me and they made fun of me and called me some kind of name. And I stopped and turned around and I said, listen, I'm going for a three mile run. And when I get back, you better be gone. Cause if you're not, I'm gonna kick your asses. And they laughed, <laughs> I turned around and I ran. Got a mile and a half, turned around, came back, they were gone. Well, I was also running through the mean streets of Philadelphia. And I would run all different ways. One time I was running up towards Port Richmond and I passed these kids who were hanging on a step at a corner and they started making fun of me. So I did the same thing. Now I'm a cop too. I wasn't carrying a weapon. I couldn't, but I, I was thinking I was a badass. And these are just kids, you know, teenagers. So they started making fun of me and I turned around and I did the same thing to them. Better not be here when I come back. And I turned around and started to leave and I heard footsteps behind me and I was gone like, ah, oh, crap, these kids are chasing me. Now, not only were they chasing me, but other kids 
had decided they were going to join in the chase. I had a sprint. I had the best workout in a long time. And I did escape those kids, but I never made that mistake again. At the same time, I started to run 5Ks. And eventually, those 5Ks turned into running marathons. I worked my way up. I was pretty good at 5Ks. I had gotten down to the point where I was doing seven minute miles, except it was 7.01. So I never reached seven minute miles, which is like a 22 minute 5K somewhere around there. I have kind of short legs and I'm just not built like a runner. Not to use that as an excuse, but I was working out pretty good. I became halfway decent, but I never made it beyond there because I, I ran my first marathon and then I never did under an eight minute mile. It just kind of ruined me for those shorter races. Uh, some of the things that happened during these shorter to intermediate, like 5K, uh, 10Ks and, and um, those kind of things, uh, up to half marathons, is that I went to a lot of different places. I had the Stone Harbor that I went to, and I had a cabin in the mountains up in Susquehanna County in upstate Pennsylvania. So there were always things in Philly and, and up into the mountains and down into New Jersey, so I could find a race. There, were, there was a time that I did something like 60 races in one year, short distance races. I remember one time that I was doing this race, it was an out and back, and I was just beating the fastest female in the race. I, and, and I knew that she was because we all went out together and then we all came, they were all coming back. So she, she was with me most of the time. We were running pretty well together. And I have no idea or no problem with a woman beating me in a race. That's not a problem at all. But what happened in this race was her boyfriend, who was very, very fast, finished the race trotted back out and started to run in with his girlfriend. And he said, let's smoke this guy. And I remember turning to him and saying, hey, you beat me once, you ain't beating me again. And, and I wound up barely finishing ahead of this woman. But here was the thing in racing, and, and it's like this in life. Right now, there's there's this whole thing about, yeah, transgender. Or the, I'm, I'm a woman this week, so I, I get to go against the, the women in athletics. It's wrong because we're built different than women. They're not going to beat us in, in sporting events naturally. Every once in a while, it happens, but it, it's, it's, it's a recipe for disaster in things like wrestling, any kind of martial arts, uh, but anything, tennis, the, the top women tennis players in the world, if they were playing against the men in singles, would be, you, you wouldn't know their names. They wouldn't be ranked high enough to get into any of the tournaments. That's, there's a reason why we have women and men's sports as separate. Anyway, I'm getting off the, the subject. So I barely beat this woman in, but I did only finish in the top third of men. So, and, and I never got awards or anything except one time, and it was in, in a torrential downpour and floods on, on Kelly Drive. I went and ran a race, and I won because nobody good was there. And then afterwards, the guy came up and told me that I didn't really want win, that a guy named Frank Clark, who was a surgeon at Hahnemann Hospital, really won, but he got called to emergency surgery and he had to leave. So 
He said, well, here's another guy named Frank Clark. Give it to him. I don't know if that's true, but it could have been true. Um, I remember one time I raced around a lake up, up in Lackawanna County. It was a 5K. And in order for it to finish in front of whatever it was, the firehouse, wherever they were going to have the ending stuff, the refreshments and the ceremonies, it started on this kind of steep downhill. And as we started, it, it's a little difficult to run downhill. It seems like it'd be easy, but it, it's a little more difficult than running on a flat surface. And people started to get tripped up and they were falling. You could hear people <laughs> screaming and, and everything. But being competitive, I remember looking as I went past people who were faster than me. That's why they were already ahead of me. They lined up ahead of me and they were, they were going out there like great guns of fire. And boom, going down and I'm going, oh, look, that guy looks like he's around my age. That guy too, that guy too. And I felt really good because I thought, well, maybe I can win something today because these people are falling and scraping their knees and maybe maybe there's broken bones involved. Maybe they won't be able to get up and continue. But later on in the race, all these annoying people with scraped knees and, and you know, blood on their chest from where they like slid came running past me and, and beat me anyway. Also, we started to take the kids. Uh, I, I, my girlfriend at the time, Judy, she had three kids and, and I had Frank and Tom and we were kind of raising them together. And, and so we would take them to races quite often, especially in places like at the shore where they were like family resorts. When they had a race, they would have a little kid race at the beginning of the day. So, so your fathers were both in races. In fact, Arlo, your dad wound up being a, a good runner, running cross country at Middle Township. Frank, your dad looked good at the starting line and he hit the ground running like he was shot from a gun, but didn't realize that going the distance was the hard part, son. He went flying. I forget how long the race was. It wasn't long because it was the little kids. And he just went flying. And some guy was going, look at that kid. Look how fast he is. Like, and he went about a block and then walked the rest of the way. Um, I, I got involved in, in races that now would be these mudder races uh, and obstacle course races. But they were different back then. I called them the, the uh, Bill Smith and, and Ron Horn races out in like the Reading, Pennsylvania area. Ron Horn put on races and then the Conestoga Trail races out there in Lancaster County that Bill Smith put on, which were brutal trail runs. I'm sure they're still doing them. Ron is still friends on Facebook with me. I know that uh, that he's had some medical issues recently and he continues to be in my prayers. Bill, I don't know whatever happened to him. I lost contact with him, but they were some fascinating races that I would do to prepare to do marathons. And they were very interesting, but brutal. I remember, in, I guess the first Conestoga trail run I did, which is 10 miles going up and down these cliffs and little goat paths and all kinds of stuff along the Susquehanna River. We got to the starting line and Bill got, got up there in front of everybody and he said, listen, you know, yeah, be careful out there and watch out for each other. But last year we had uh, everybody in this one section of the race were attacked by bees. And I'm thinking, oh crap. And and this guy standing over to the side with this giant earring went like, bees, yeah, bees, I love bees. And I thought, well, nobody loves bees that way. Maybe this guy is 
attached. And I'm sure he is, or was. Um, and I did, I did that run, I, I got done the run, and I went up to Bill, and I said, I hate you. That was the hardest thing I ever did. I was all muddy, and, and I said, and I just went one thing to say to you. Where do I get the application to get in next year? And I did, I did those for years while I was still in the area. Then in 1994, I did my first marathon, which was a, it was a rail to trail marathon that went from someplace in Maryland to all, it was all in Maryland, I think. And, and it went towards Gettysburg. It went on the rail to trail path that was where the train went to Gettysburg that, that Lincoln wrote the Gettysburg Address on as he was going there to give that. And, and I, I finished that race in 426, I think. Judy finished it in four even, kicked my butt. And after that, I never did another one in under five hours. And in fact, I've done them in six and a half hours. The last one that I did in, in Fort Lauderdale in 2013, I think, it was just brutal because it was hot by the time that I got done and, and I had a ticket on my car. I, I, it was just like, hey, this is over. But I, but I did a bunch of them. I did 46 marathons. I did Marine Corps three times. I did it one time on 9-11 by on 9-11. 9-11 happened, of course, in 2001, and the Marine Corps Marathon was in October of 2001, and I had put in for it. Now, New York was gonna be in, in November, so I contacted them and said, look, I'm doing Marine Corps. I want to do New York too. And they said, you don't know how many people are calling and saying that they want to do it. But back then, I mean, every event you went to was going to have a lot of security and the, the Marine Corps Marathon would definitely had a bunch of security. So I, I did it that year. And then the next year that I did it, and, and that year was amazing. One of the places we ran past was the Pentagon and there was, it was a construction site. And there was a man on top of this, it, it, it was like a double wide trailer that they were using as an office building at the construction site. And he was standing on top of it with a big American flag waving it. It was, uh, uh, it was a very emotional race for me. So th the next time I ran it, Tom was in boot camp. And they had all these young Marines there who were guarding, you know, the, the whole route. So I spent the entire time looking from side to side, looking all over the place to see if I could see Tom. And, and I did, and then he wasn't there. And then the last time I ran it, I ran it with Tom. And about 20 miles into it, he had been doing the walk run, four minutes of, of running and two minutes of walking. That, that I did, it's called Galloway. He had been doing that with me and he said, Dad, listen, I, I just need to finish this thing. I'm miserable, I need to finish, I gotta go. And, and I said, fine, and he went off and, and finished the race. Because I'm not very fast I, and I never, never was fast, never will be fast. One thing I hated about the Marine Corps Marathon was Kermit the Frog. All three times that I ran it, there was this runner dressed in a full Kermit the Frog, smiley face, green costume with the head over top and the whole thing waving the kids.
and he would always catch up to me fairly late in the race. And every time I went, I'll be damned if I'm gonna be beat by some guy in a Kermit the Frog suit. And every time he pulled ahead of me and hey, it is what it is. I got my ass kicked by Kermit the Frog. I talked about running two marathons on my honeymoon, in my honeymoon video. I ran Paris and London. I won't rehash the stories of them, but they were amazing. I ran the Costa Rica marathon. Arlo, your dad ran with me. He ran the half marathon. It was a, an amazing race that went out on the equivalent of an interstate. They shut down the interstate. All these people were beeping at me, like beep, 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 beep. And I didn't know if they were pissed or if they were cheering me on. So I just imagined they were cheering me on. At the end of that race, it, it ended in this, in, in the National Soccer Stadium in San Jose. There were like four people left there by the time I was done. And, and, and so I went in and this little kid started running on the track with me. I'm like, you want to race me? I'm like, you're going to win this race, son. I got done and I said, is there transportation to get me anywhere? And they said, yeah, just go outside and, and uh, you can get a cab. So I went out there and Tom was gone already. He was back probably taking a nap or hanging out in the pool Everybody else was having a good time. They were they were at this swanky resort. And here I am out by the soccer stadium at a time when there was nothing going on. So there was traffic going past, but it took me a while. And finally, this guy picked me up in a cab and he acted like he didn't know what I was saying. And I was trying in my pigeon Spanish to tell him where I wanted to go to. And I knew he was taking me in the wrong direction. I could see the signs. And I'm telling him, you're taking me in the wrong direction. And he's going, no, no, no. Well, it turned out that he was in Costa Rican fashion. He was having some fun with me. He understood everything I said. Not only that, this man ran the full marathon, got done, went home, took a shower, had lunch, and went to work as a cab driver and picked me up. So we had a good laugh about that. He, he said, because this was kind of an out and back, he said he remembered seeing me and he knew that I was struggling. <laughs> and he saw me fairly early in the, in the race. Quebec City, I did Quebec City in a London Marathon t-shirt. I wasn't very popular there. I did Atlantic City several times. One time in a nor'easter, running on the boardwalk in Ventnor in Atlantic City, the ocean actually came underneath the boardwalk and into the people's front yards. So you were running over the ocean. And then I came up to this seawall at the north end. And as I was going around, you, you were supposed to go right next to the seawall. A wave hit it and went Bush! And usually you like getting a little bit wet, but you don't like getting wet with salt water. So it was horrible. It started scraping my chest and everything as it was drying up later. Um, one of my favorite marathons was the Ocean Drive, which went from Cape May up to, I think, Sea Isle City. And it was my favorite because it, 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 you were out in the middle of nowhere most of the time, going through the seashore communities that I grew up in. And, but the one year, my dad asked, you know, when are you gonna be passing our street? Maybe I'll walk down there. And I told him, but I missed that by like a half an hour. My dad was old by this time. He was like 83, maybe. 
and, and as I came up, I saw this man up there at 87th Street. And I went, oh, no, is that him? He's been waiting for a half an hour. He, um, well, he drove his car down it, and, and he sat in the car. And then every time he saw a runner coming, he'd get out. And, and so as I went past, your uh, great-grandfather was there to cheer me on. Post-cancer, I did Miami and Fort Lauderdale. I trained a lot for Miami and I did well. I think I did it in five and a half hours doing, doing the, um, now I forget the name of it, Galloway. My favorite thing in running in Miami though was the Raven Run. Raven Run, eight miles on the beach, South Beach, Guy started in 1985, and he has run every day. He's still running in 2022, every day. ESPN has come down and done segments on him and stuff. Now I'm with the Jack's Beach Runners, and they're great people. But I have a problem. I hurt my left ankle. And my, my left foot has been a problem since I started running. It was where I got plantar fasciitis, which a lot of runners get. And then eventually got a bone spur in my heel, which is what plantar fasciitis turns into. One of my yearly bike rides on February 5th, my half birthday bike rides. Some gentlemen ran over my f left foot with an SUV. But recently I started feeling tightness in, in the Achilles on the left one. And I, I went to an orthopedic surgeon and he said that I had tears in, in the Achilles tendon and that I should stop running now. I don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't wanna stop running. As you can tell, I've run a lot and I've loved running as I've run. And I was really enjoying getting to know the people at the Jack's Beach Runners. They have several runs a, a, a week and a couple of them center around beer. So I was all in. Right now I'm in rehab. As soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna be getting in the Vanagon and heading down to my physical therapy. I'm nearing the end of it. I'd say right now there's a 50-50 chance that I'll ever run again. And that's okay. I have other things in life, hiking. I go out for a walk every morning on the beach with grandmother. I work out now at Planet Fitness. I have other things to, to focus on. I would love to run again, but if I don't, that's okay. And I wanna close with this song and it's about running, but it's completely different than that other song. This is about if you had to run to save your life, could you do it? And even though right now I'm not supposed to run, I was on the beach the other day going for a hike and there was this earth mover thing pulling sand out, trying to clear out this valve that had clogged up. And he was gonna back up and I was gonna go in back of him. And he looked at me like, you need to go fast or wait for me. And I ran and he saw me running. He just waited until I was gone and I was fine running for like 20 steps. So I know right now that if I had to run for my life, that I could, but I could because I've done it over the years. Take up running. You'll never regret it.
and hopefully you'll never have to be involved in something like this song. Peace out.